a um, thousand bucks and all she has to do is just like a, a phone call maybe here and there just talk like I don't know if maybe he's lonely like he don't, she doesn't oh, have okay. to meet up with their like they don't live in the same state or anything like wow. that it's just a so they have like phone sex or something potentially yeah. okay it's very <laughs> not, not, totally <laughs> not enough very details in this yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, have, enough details in I this. have a a friend who has friends who they do the similar thing but they just have to like go to dinner or mm. like hang out with them oh we'll go to dinner like yeah anyone and that's like paid for dinner obviously and like picked up in nice yeah. cars and go to nice restaurants yeah, and yeah, I wouldn't pay for it all that sort of shit like I'm yeah yeah not, so a, bad, not a bad gig when you really think about it <laughs> yeah I'm in yeah I'm in. yeah, yeah I'm, the feet thing I'm in <laughs> yeah it out there. so yes this conversation started from <laughs> the sneak peek of Jason's foot in the reel last week I don't like wearing shoes I don't really like wearing clothes but here we are full matching <laughs> tracksuits disappearing into this chair <laughs> Jason's actually a floating head this week. Ben decided to be a marshmallow flavor. Yeah, I am a, a crayon. At I this do point. like the contrast though. It's very us. Yeah, hundred oh, percent. <laughs> like even it's like if we're gonna go stupid and do the matching tracks, it, just to be clear, this is a joke, guys. Like it's, just <laughs> it's a joke for Ben, not for me. <laughs> um, ben was, decided to wear his pajamas to work today. <laughs> I was like, if I'm gonna That's go, if we're gonna go in, I may as well go in on it properly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like every week you see the podcast and it's like, Jason has all black yeah. Ben has black and lots of white it's yeah. ev- all the time. I got a gray tracksuit coming and I bought this one, which I thought was very, uh, what, like you know, fuck boy gray or dark gray. Oh no, no, not fuck boy gray. <laughs> it's like asphalt. It's called asphalt. It's called asphalt. So there you go. It's actually not gray. It's asphalt. Okay. There you go. <laughs> yeah. To be specific. Welcome to the podcast, Ruby. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Everyone. This is Ruby. Hello. Uh, I didn't get enough information out of this sugar daddy thing, but it's all right. Let's move on. <laughs> we, can, we, we can come back <laughs> to it. I really just swept it under the rug. I was like, I want fucking details. <laughs> Maybe I'll, inter- I'll, I'll to entertain a me- the next message that comes to an Instagram and yeah, give you an not update. Not to have one, to be one. <laughs> I don't want to have a sugar daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm all about it. I would be... It's like to see what's involved. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So phone calls and but dinners. You get, sounds amazing. Yeah. You've gotten like quite a bit Muscle of uh, attention. Throughout the DMs, muscle worshipping requests. Yeah, yeah, but that's weird because like that's involving like an act of something. Like someone wants you to like I don't know, maybe sit on them or some shit, arm yeah. wrestle them. I've seen that too. I've seen some girls post like guys inbox them and like walk on my back and shit. I'm like, hey, yeah. would they trade that in for a ninety kilo powerlifter? Because I'll do it. <laughs> What's that? There's that um, <laughs> the bodybuilding uh, like documentary. Like- What's it called? Yeah. Where the chick arm wrestles the guys in the hotel room uh, yeah, for like 500 bucks. one of the bucks. Louis, of how do you pronounce his last name? Theroux? Yeah, Louis yeah. Theroux does a, a full like hour on it. Yeah. I'm like, I think it's primarily like because there's not a lot of money in women's bodybuilding. Mm. Yeah. They have to make money somehow. Yeah. yeah, so they do all weird shit. Too. Yeah. And get paid heaps. Like, yeah. One of them was like wrestling, just had to wrestle a guy for like 500 US. Fuck, I'd do that. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you give you it could, a good shot. Yeah, you could probably fucking put him to sleep or something. Though. Like, <laughs> I was going to say, she got out of hand. I'm a yeah, yeah. sneaky assassin. <laughs> yeah, I can't fight. <laughs> Underestimate yeah. me, I dare you. I can't, I can't fight. I just have dark features. And look like <laughs> She's got a beard and a shaved head. Yeah. Do you think I can fight? I I, I'm pretty sure most of those women were in positions that they would win. <laughs> <laughs> there was like body yeah. slam shit and all. Oh, everything gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure one of the girls had um, a greater beard than mm. uh, the husband. When we yeah. married that chick, yeah. Mm. That's pretty... Tam, what's yeah, the yeah. coffee situation? So anyway. Is that Ruby's and that's mine? They're, they're, yeah, I'm just making sure they're both the same. Thank you. It's like they're both put in front of me and I was like, I definitely don't need two. I probably don't need one, but I definitely yeah, don't need Yeah, I don't even two. need one, yeah. but I'm going to drink it because you made it. Because <laughs> nothing delicious. goes to waste, Tam, as you know. So this is the perks of actually traveling to mm. the studio is you get to try Tam's Viet coffee, which is elite. It's mad, Tam. I already know what it tastes like. It's good. <laughs> I don't have to have a sip right now. <laughs> I don't have to, nor you uh, could should have, I. You could have talked while we were sipping just to fill the... I was watching to watching the enjoyment. Okay. I was watching Ruby's was eyes light up as the delicious <laughs> coffee touched her lips. Has anyone tried this? Yes. Uh, is that no, the... Oak, Oak, sponsor me, bruh. That's the... Uh, Oak Plus. The bottle that you told me tasted so good and drank it all. And didn't give me, didn't offer anything to me. He's like, "Hey, you know, I took my last really mouthful, and I was like, this is really fucking good. You should try it.' <laughs> <laughs> we 
was actually like, but lived- not this one. <laughs> <laughs> we actually <laughs> lived on them on um, my PTI course because, like, just the energy expenditure is so high. Yeah. And the mess meals were, for lack of a better term, pretty trash. Mm. Not yeah. really any dessert. So that was, like, our dessert slash recovery. You may try some, thing. Jason. No, no, I don't want it. Tastes you. like pound no, pot. I don't want your, your drink now. They had a Nutrigrain <laughs> one upset. for a little while that wasn't actually too bad. It tasted like the milk in the bottom of the Nutrigrain. Mm. Yeah. So I said you, they should make a Fruit Loop one. Were you one. smashing the protein ones? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. they're like, um, what are they, like 200 calories? Mm. 250? Is that 300 calories? They're 300, yeah. I think it's 250. Yeah. It's 13, 1,300 kilojoules. My oh, fitness pal tells me it's 250. But my mm. fitness pal isn't very reliable. Well, <laughs> it's got... <laughs> 30 grams of protein and 28 grams of carbs. So that's like 240 calories already. Oh, 295. Yeah. 300 calories. Thank you. I'll, yeah. Well, good. Not Three, bad. Three, Not bad. 300 calories, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take it for... It's the only math I can do. <laughs> um, count bands and I count macros. And 25 kilo plates. Oh, yeah. And yeah. yeah. Are you Sound bite that. <laughs> <laughs> count bands... Macros and twenty five kilo weights. Booyah. So Sweet. then the the like a boss, you know, the <laughs> shades start coming down, <laughs> a little joint on the side. <laughs> yeah, you have to get that to time with him explaining what you want to happen as it happens. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. Now I actually want to see that happen. I'm very much enjoying the new vibe of this podcast so far already. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I can just come and be do and say <laughs> whatever the fuck I like. No, no, no. Um, oh, there's someone here. Fuck. Yeah, no, no. We, probably, we, probably should, Hi. <laughs> we probably should do a slight introduction of who Ruby is, what you do, mm. etc. So give us, because there's like a thousand things. Yeah. Give us a rundown of like what life looks like for you at the moment. Oh, where do I start? Um, so I'm currently serving in the ADF as a physical training instructor. So what that really entails is running PT um, in the mornings for, and I'm in a training establishment at the moment. So um, training trainees to be fit, strong, strong as fuck, all that sort of stuff. A um, yeah. little bit of like a disciplining involved as well, um, sort of building that mental resilience sort of side of things. Um, and then a side piece to that, uh, running PT business, online coaching, nutrition coaching, which I love, fills in a lot of time between the two of them. Um, but yeah, that's pretty That's pretty much like a very quick snapshot mm. of me. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. How long has that been drawn over um, when you first walked into the ADF to now? Oh gosh. So I first enlisted in 2017, fresh yep. uh, 17 year old, turned 18 at basic training at Kapuka. So awesome. that was great. Got uh, uh, So for people who don't know, pretty much a lot of the time at basic training, you're brought into the hallway to make announcements and stuff. And so I was kind of hoping that my birthday was not going to get brought up <laughs> because I did not want all the attention of a hundred plus people um, brought on to me, but we got all called into the hallway. Like we're all like, you know, tripping over each other to get into the hallway and they were like, all right, it's Recruit Force's birthday. We're all going to sing happy birthday and we're going to sing it loud. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. So I've gone bright red in the face. like, And I was just like, I have never felt so small in my entire life. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, enlisted quite young. Um, so what's And, yeah, I'm rolling into my fifth year, um, fifth year of mm. um, service, which is crazy. Like, I – was even saying to one of my friends the other day, like, I can't believe it's been five years since, like, mm. all that's happened. Like, it feels like it's gone for a long time, but then a short time at the same time. Um, and then, yeah, so I listed into artillery initially. So I was um, artillery air defender up until last year, um, which was, like, I really loved that side of things as well. Like, it was um, – came with its challenges, um, that's for sure, but it was – like very fulfilling and has definitely taught me a lot of lessons and things that I carry on today. So um, artillery, air, defending. Mm-hmm. What do you do? Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just think oh, yeah. oh, all I can see is like a big shell into a cannon yeah. that just launches I went, into the air. <laughs> I went and watched Top Gun on the weekend and I'm like, that sounds really cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all I can think about is shooting down planes. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. That's, that's essentially what it is. Yeah. So you're a plane like, shooter down Yeah. <laughs> plane shooter down at Think about it. So it's like, it's, um, it's an old bit of kit now, really, but <laughs> it was almost, 
I attribute it to almost like a video game. Like I'm not downplaying like what air defense is, but the way that we as an operator controlled it was very much like um, a video game in like we had full control over tracking the aircraft. um, And then once you get given the um, command to fire by your um, supervisor, then like, you know, it's up to you to fire the missile, but then keep the missile on the target. So it's very like involved and there's like a little bit of like a, Oh, how to explain it? Like you've, it, there's always like a joystick. Yeah, so a bit of fine like, motor skills involved. Yeah, a bit of fine motor skills like involved. I, could, I feel like I could make you that trained jump. for this your whole life, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is it a lie that they recruit people who are really good at video games? Like, is that a thing? Or I think the no, drone guys. Well, are, they? actually, um, going. I was at a um, forum last week, and we were talking about, and a lot of this came up about the people who are coming through recruiting now. Um, And compared to even like 10, 15 years ago, like a lot of time it was people who did like, this is just like a generalization, but people who were really good at sports, team sports, there was a lot more emphasis on the fit side of things. Whereas now, like, you know, they are looking for people who are also more into the gaming side of things, Mm. people who are, I guess, more um, technologically savvy, just because with the, like with how everything's progressing now, it's like, you know, a lot more um, tech based, I suppose. Yeah. Not yeah, all yeah. trades, like obviously, like the what I do for a job now, like the most tech I use is a speaker and a computer. But <laughs> yeah, same, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe a barbell. Yeah. yeah, Tam does all the other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but no, air defense. Uh, it was really cool. Um, and the like community in artillery, which and like now that I'm back, sort of in that space now, mm. um, working um at the school down there, like it's. Like the culture is awesome. Like just yep, the yep. banter, the um, the direction before, like towards fitness and you know bettering yourself and all that. Like I I love being back in that environment because part of what was scary about transferring is not only going to something that's a bit unknown, like you're leaving something that's very very comfortable. Is like you know where am I going to go next? Am I going to enjoy being there? Am I going to is the culture and the environment going to be what I want or mm. like what I aspired at? aspired it to be and and it is like especially taking um our staff for pt like sometimes like you just laugh so hard that you like it's like your abs hurt you can't stop smiling like just having that (laughs) and like you know people walk into the gym and you're just like yelling at each other across the gym like we're very loud sort of alpha sort of personalities so it's great (laughs) yeah that's awesome yeah maybe we should just i can just um, picture a bunch of people just chess out yeah yeah Yeah, invisible lat syndrome yeah Yeah. Yeah. lots of high fives i feel like oh Yes and no. Like, I mean, a lot of time people will, like, high five if they, like, um, pass an assessment or something. And we're kind of like, guys, that, that was a basic fitness assessment. You shouldn't, you <laughs> oh. shouldn't be high fiving. So they're not so. woo girls. Okay. <laughs> so, tell me, so tell me about the disciplinary part of this because that's the first I, thing that I was like. Yeah. What do you have? Like, are you ordered to do this? Like, are you like? Do you have to put people in their shells a little bit? It's yeah. Like, you know, if I like pumped out me thirty clap push ups at Ben's Bucks party when people think mm. I couldn't, um, <laughs> it's like a lot just, of tokens <laughs> for that too. <laughs> it's like, are you are you like just getting in their face? It's like that's nothing. You want nothing? <laughs> uh, to a degree, yes. Um, like, if people are like, is we have standards that we have to reach, and there's like they we have to reach them for a purpose, and like you know that's what it is. So for I'll give the dudes example. They have to get 40 push-ups. And if they're getting to 25 and they're struggling and they're failing, it's like, you know, what's happening here? Like, you need to get into your own head and push these out. Like, you need to get to this mark. Um, In terms of, like, you know, your stereotypical yelling and all that sort of stuff, there is a time and place for that. Yeah. Um, and we'll definitely enact that. But it's always it's always got a lesson and a purpose behind it. Yeah, So... Um, we won't just, you know, start yelling at people, calling them pieces of shit just for the, the sake of like, you so know, fun. an ego driven kind of like I'm superior to you. It's like, it's not about that. It's about teaching them because, you know, we're getting people coming from Civvy Street into a military environment. Mm-hmm. And for some people like myself, it was, you know, coming straight from school and depending on upbringing, some people come in and they get the biggest culture shock of their life. And they're like, all of a sudden, like, why is this five foot fuck all like, person in red like absolutely (laughs) belittling and and screaming at me like what's going on here um but if like what the way that we go about instilling that discipline and that um resilience is I'll use an example because that's the best way that I like try and explain things if we're in PT the standard is you jog between the stations 
Like you're always moving, that sense of urgency that, you know, you're getting to that next station, you're starting work straight away because that's getting you into the mindset of like, you know, when the job's on, the job's on, you need to get that shit done. Um, and, you know, if we catch people walking or being a bit lazy or not getting out of neutral, it's like, right, like what's going on here? Rocket. Yeah. Rocket. The hair dryer <laughs> <Yeah>. is coming <laughs> out. <laughs> Pretty much. And then it's sort of like um, – will always there's always a purpose behind why we're teaching them that Mm. um and then also the discipline in you know making sure that you're getting to places on time like meeting timings um but we also use it from a standpoint of sort of teaching them where their not their breaking point is as such but knowing where their limit is and how to push past that and when to pull back Mm. so that in itself we sort of find once they know that, it's like the discipline kind of flows from there. And you'll see it in they'll first come in and sometimes they'll either fail an assessment or they'll have like a bit of a, a, a culture shock and it flips something. You can see it when they have their aha moment because they're like, I'm not at the standard here or I'm not going to be able to keep up. I'm not going to make it here if something doesn't change. Um, and then you'll see them sort of start to come to the gym in their own time or they'll come up and ask you more questions about something or you'll just see their input in PT go from zero to a hundred. Like, you know. What's the percentage of that happening versus a port? Yeah. Like, get me out of here. Um, This year so far, um, we've had um, no one sort of go from, we've had everyone who's come through at the start of the year go out and pass and go to their unit. So it's been a very, very good turnaround. Must have a good teacher. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I'm all for like sort of like there's a time and place for us to be, you know, yelling and all that sort of stuff and like in the sake of sort of belittling them. And I do it in the way of like, you know, that positivity sandwich sort of thing. Like, you know, you um, do your job, but but that was shit. But but we'll we'll, we'll start (laughs) off with it being like, this is what you did that was shit. Be better. Um, but then give them the why behind it. Like, you know, why we're doing this, like not just, you know, oh my gosh, we're going to be running around the hangar. We're going to be doing all these push ups and sit ups. We're going to be sending it on the assault bike for 10 seconds just for the sake of it. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, this is what happened. This is what you did. This is how we're going to come back from that. This is what the actual standard is required. Once you meet that, then we'll go back. And then once they've done that, it's like, okay, you guys actually did really well with that if they have done well mm. um, and all that sort of stuff. Sometimes we give the disappointed dad speeches. Like I've had to have, like I've had a few of them. Because You're better I'm like, than this. Like, I'm just disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's nothing worse than that. It's like just yeah. no, there's no yelling, nothing. It's just like, I'm just really disappointed. Like, oh, that hurts yeah. so much. Like, yell my, at me. Just yell was, at me, That please. was my dad's yeah. only move. Oh, really? So I didn't, yeah. didn't really get yelled at ever. But yeah. It was just like, the, the sadness on the face is like, oh, I've made a big mistake. Yeah. Here. Having a European parent yeah. yelling is just like, ah, it just goes in one ear. Yeah. Like, even now when they talk, <laughs> nor, you know, and you were like, are they yelling at each other? I'm like, no, they just talk that way. <laughs> so when they go, oh, I'm really disappointed, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. I'm really fucked up here. <laughs> so, like, I, it's, it's, ob- it's an obvious question to ask, mm-hmm. but I think it's important to ask. Being like you said, five foot or mm-hmm. whatever you are, mm-hmm. being female, how is that, has that raised challenges or are we at a point now where it's like, makes a difference? It definitely raised challenges at the start. Like I, even going through basic training, like, cause obviously they know that you're going into artillery, which, you know, being a combat core. And I had no fucking idea when I got recruited, what I was like able to do. Like they mm. didn't really give me any information about like, what to expect um but i was getting told like you know i think you should transfer i think you should consider these jobs i think you should do that like you know we don't want you to break and all this sort of stuff and i was like they don't fucking know me so (laughs) and tell me not to like i can't do something i'll be like i'm gonna prove you wrong so that was sort of like the mindset that i had i I low-key thought that for the first three months of coaching her too you have so much work you're gonna break and it was just like more more, more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell me I can't do something, I'll fucking do it. <laughs> um, so it sort of, it did start off straight away in that they were like, you know, you're so little, like, you know, we don't want you to break. And it, it came, I know from most of them, it came from a place of they just wanted to protect me and they just yeah, wanted, yeah. like it came from a good place, but I was also like, you don't know me. Mm. <laughs> so then going from there to... Um, at least, sorry to cut you off, at least there it's like that it, you felt like it came from a good place, not from a place of like... Who's this little chick here? She's not. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's good. I like that. Yeah. And then obviously going into um, 
I tell you, like it's still and still is today like a very male dominated space like there weren't many of us females and going in there we had no female instructors or anything like that um so we sort of learned very early on that like you know we went in with the mentality that like we're a soldier first mm, and yeah. at the end of the day like you need to be able to do the job and if you can't do it stiff shit like yeah. you don't want to be a liability and then, like, my mindset towards it, that was like, I'm never going to be a liability. I'm going to always be able to keep up. Um, and then, like, going through all the training processes and all that sort of stuff, the first time I uh, put a 30 kilo pack on, I was like, heck. Like, <laughs> this is. Um, I'm sure that's the word you use too. Heck. Yeah. Uh, I use probably a very more explicit <laughs> word, but. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, so that was like, cause we build up for it. So it's not that you go from like, you know, zero to a hundred. We started mm. at like 25 and we build up, but at that time. <laughs> That's still like. Yeah. And I was like. What, 50, a third? Yeah. I was like yeah. 50, 52 kilos yeah. back then. Like I was tiny. Um, so towards the end, like, you know, you're carrying 35 to 40 kilos for, um, 10 kilometers and you have to do it in a certain time frame. So like I'm and all the um, physical training instructors and my staff always used to laugh about like I was literally a pack with legs. Yeah. <laughs> and they, like we'd go off on a pack march and they're yelling out of the hangar, where the fuck's that person? That pack's got legs. Where's Rubes? And it was like, you know, just like a running joke with um, Perhaps it's like all that sort of stuff. The little kid trick in the crowd when you tie the balloon to the top of it. So you know yeah. Who you are. <laughs> and it's always like with um, marching discipline, especially when you're in a group, it's always shortest to the front. So right. like, being me is like, you know, you set pace. Um so that was hard, not having like that, I guess, prior conditioning to pack marching. It was like, and pack marching is a lot more mental than it is physical because it mm. never gets more comfortable. It ne- It's always going to hurt to a certain degree because like you've got a heavy as fuck pack on your back, like you get blisters and all sorts, mm. like it's it's uncomfortable. Um, but it, even in that, like it taught me a lot of lessons just in mindset wise is just like, you know, how can you keep going when literally everything in your body is like, I'm hurting Like, what is that intrinsic motion motivation to keep going? Mm. Um, So, yeah, that was hard. And even there was a few staff and all that, even through that process that was like, you know, are you sure you're going to be able to make it? Like, we don't Mm. want you to break. Um, So that to me, like, while it was disheartening in some regards, it's like, well, what do I want? Like, Mm. just because they're projecting that on me doesn't mean that that's what I want. So, like, I just kept chipping away, chipping away, chipping away at it. Um, And then coming to my assessment, like, I did end up, getting a back injury just from Mm. the load of the pack and Mm. all that sort of stuff. So that in itself was another learning curve in like, is this actually what I really want going through that rehab process? And again, I had people like, oh, you know, don't you think this is a sign that you aren't made for this job, that you can't do it? And I was like, well, I can do every other part of the job. Like, it's just that it was just so happened that like an injury did occur and Mm. it happened because of X, Y, and Z reason. Um, So the physical training instructors there were very monumental in helping me like mindset and physical wise to get like rehab my back and then get back to being able to pack march with that amount of weight and do it well. Would have been a psychological hurdle as well to put the pack back on, hey? Oh, yeah. 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 Knowing that that's what spurred it was like, yeah. And there was a few like pack marches. Obviously, it flares up. Like it's still something that I have to manage and be careful of today. Um, But Again, it just came down to how bad do you want it? Mm. Like, just keep going. One yeah. foot in front of the other, keep going. Um, and then just knowing that, like, you know, I it went back to that mentality of, like, I'm keeping up with the boys. Like, I'm going to yeah. I'm gonna make it mm. and I'm going to, you know, do fucking well at it. Um, and then, and at that time, like, I was pretty much the only female in that environment as well. So, I wouldn't say that, like, it being a male-dominated environment has phased me all that much. Like... I'm again a bit of the like an alpha personality in a way and like I like definitely get like do well in that environment um but then sort of as like your career goes on um like you do sort of be like I can be a female as well like I don't have to you know be in that energy all the time and you know have to necessarily have it as my sole motivation to keep up and all mm. that sort of stuff. Whereas I, I still love it. Like I, that's still <laughs> my drive today is yeah. um, to, you know, especially being in the environment that I am now, like I can pra- like practicing what I preach. So you think that's something that's matured outside of work? It's just <coughs> like leading into being a female. Yeah. 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 A hundred percent. Like as for so long, I was like, you know, you want to be like one of the boys, like you want to be accepted in that way. Yeah. Um, but then sort of, yeah, as I've matured and as I've um, 
I guess, I don't know where the turning point sort of was where I decided or sort of thought that like, you know, what, like what part of me is missing in that way. Mm. Whereas like sort of when I went back to sort of being like, you don't have to be in that energy all the time. Yeah. Like it's, it's okay to, you know, want to go out and get your nails done and yeah. <laughs> all that sort of stuff as well. I think it's um, cool to have both. Hey, like mm. you're able to flick that switch and mm. leverage that, what would be considered, I guess, more m- masculine kind of mm. like grit your teeth and get it done. But then yeah, leverage the feminine side as well. And p- yeah. particularly being a coach. Yeah. Like, a- and even just like, if you do have not even just, um, women coming through, like young people coming through, yeah. being able to have empathy and lean into that side as well, I think is probably a skill. And it's it's weird that you say that actually, because I've noticed that more so in the first, like this like first six months in this new job, because I'm like surrounded by so many different people, like trainees and then like, you know, they come and go with the courses and then um, with the staff as well, is being that like sort of point of contact where, you know, there's a lot more sort of empathy and sort of, and doing all the work, like, you know, mindset wise and mm. coaching and all that. So it's like coming back to that, like if they're coming up to me and confiding in the fact that they've got a bit of performance anxiety and it's not being like tough in the fuck up where yeah. there's a time and a place for that. But <laughs> when they come to you in confidence being like, you know, I'm really scared, mm. like I'm scared. I'm, I can't keep up. I feel sick. Like just even coming to work or PT or something like that, because I want to perform and I'm not quite at that standard. It's then having like, you know, coming back to that sort of like, okay, I need to be a bit more nurturing here Mm. rather than Mm. just being like tough on the fuck up, mate. Like, you know, you're like all that sort of stuff. It's finding that balance and what they need in that moment rather than, yeah, Yeah. rather than, and bringing that into particularly an environment that used to be very like tough on the fuck up. Like you need to, you need to um, just forget about your problems and all that sort of stuff. Whereas, yeah. like, you know, as we, I think even as a society, as we grow and as we realize that taking care of like your mind and your emotional energy and your mental energy, as well as your physical energy, that holistic approach is going to make not not only someone a better soldier, but a better person as well. Yeah. And it's going to make them more resilient in the long term rather than just making, like, instilling it out of fear. Mm-hmm. Um, like, so yeah, just. Yeah. In that, we have more. Flow. We have more options. You have more options in terms yeah. of your coaching. Like yeah. more tools back in the in day, it was like yeah. yeah. Back in the day, I didn't even really know like how to get performance mm. out of someone from a mental mm. perspective. It was like you you don't submit basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. If you don't like, the only thing I can say to you is just you don't want it bad enough. Yeah. Like mm. where now it's there's a lot more information yeah. and a lot mm. more tools and strategies yeah. to go. All right, how can I solve this acute problem? Yeah. For this individual, mm. you know, it just occurred to me that we're discussing femininity while I wear. <laughs> matching pink jobs. I might the pink I mean I've got pink lean nails into it. so I guess that's lean my into contribution it then. yeah, yeah. Lean into it. I'm sure there's a salmon t-shirt in my wardrobe somewhere yeah. <laughs> and I mean some people still thrive off like I guess like that um, yelling and sort of side of things like I know when like I'm training with like partic- particularly my um, group of people like a lot of the time like some of the narrative in my head, even when I'm training with myself, I'm like, I'm so brutal. Like if someone knew what was going through my head right yeah. now, they'd probably be like, you're yeah. fucking mental. Is that when you train? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think of fucking weird shit yeah. when I train. Cause it's like, yeah. Like just to get the last like yeah. couple of reps out. Yeah. I just think of scenarios that are just like, are really fucking twisted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and- Can we go there? <laughs> what are they? Oh, like, you know, someone's hurting my dog. Yeah, Someone's right. So you Steph. go into like actual. Yeah, I'm just like, if I don't yeah. get the last three reps, like my world's going to end. Yeah. Like, well. Someone's going to kill my dog or someone's yeah. going to take Mav or. And yeah. I'm just like, so then I'm like, well, I'll have to get these rep, these reps out. Mm. Like, yeah. I just say shit like that. Yeah. Like, I heard a story of uh, another coach. He asked his client about um, what, what, how he gets so G'd up because his client gets real G'd up. And he said that, like, he, he envisions someone stealing his baby, like, every time Whoa, he trains. And fuck. I was like, whatever you need to I'd need like a nap <laughs> after every session <laughs> do you is it your similar approach yeah like yeah. it's interesting because um, yeah. mine's more like um it, it starts with like at the start of the set it's like who are you gonna be and then by the end of the end of the set it's like don't be a fucking piece of shit 
or don't be a pussy. Like it's it just aggress- yeah. progressively <laughs> gets more aggressive at myself throughout more the self deprecating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's almost like or it. as the load goes up, it's like Rah! it's yeah. like it just levels up. But I haven't tried the scenario thing. Yeah, yeah. so maybe yeah, maybe it, I'll it start switch, thinking it about people murdering trade. my family. It switch, switches and trades for me. Like when it's sort of like more strength based and a um, all that sort of stuff, it is the sort of more self depreciating. Like you need to. Like, you know, don't be a piece of shit. Like, you know, you've got more in your life. Yeah. And yeah. like, no, knowing when my brain's like, you're just being a little fucking bitch. Just fucking send it. <laughs> just fucking go. I was going to say the C word then. <laughs> it's all right. It's been on here before. You'll okay, be fine. good. <laughs> yeah. I was actually me on the way here. I'm like, Ruby, you cannot. No, just, you, you can. can't just pump that out the whole time. Um, <laughs> and then like. Three, three per episode. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's a limit. <laughs> or, or we won't have yeah. anything good to cut. <laughs> you know, content out of yeah, this we'll episode. Put it yeah. on it's like, oh, I'm swearing. <laughs> and then with conditioning, that's where I sort of go into the more scenario-based things. Like, mm. um, if it's like really starting to get hard and you're like gassed and you sort of can't breathe and like, you know, the lactic acid's mm. building up, you want to go and have a gut check. It's like, well, no, that can fucking wait. Like, this scenario is happening or like, say it's like your friend's in like a lot of trouble and like the only way you're going to save them is if you get to say that end of the rep or mm. something like yeah. that. And I always break, um, especially if there's like a like a rep target or so, say if it's like 10 <clears throat> reps or something, I'll always make sure I like if you're splitting up the reps even into like anything, like you always go ha- more than halfway first. Oh, yeah. Because if you're just going halfway, it's like, why are you stopping halfway? Go that little bit further. Always go that further. Be yeah. better. So it's like that sort of like mindset awesome. in the thing as well. It's awesome. And yeah. <laughs> this is what I love particularly about running group PT and like with the trainees as well. It was like when like watching them like in that hurt locker and, you know, you can see when they're processing things like in their brain. It's like, you know, go to that dark place. Find what works for you and mm. just fucking send it. Find mm what it is that motivates you and drives you to go that little bit further. Even when like, you know, you're bleeding power on the assault bikes, it's like your seventh round and they're like, Ruby, can we like stop now? Like this is unfragged. You say, (laughs) we're just getting started. (laughs) So that was the warm up guys. Yeah. I think the coolest part too is like, you would see Ruby train and just be like, oh fuck. Yeah. That's how hard we have to work too. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. You don't hit people with sticks or. No. No. Sounds better than like the mixed martial arts training. Yeah. Maybe I'll come over there for a bit of training. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like, and what, like, and having it in a group, like the group environment as well, like is, is awesome. Like, you know, getting them to get around each other and pick each other up as well. And then watching that teamwork start flowing in yeah. um, as well. It's just so good to see. It's like, you know, people getting up each other. And if like someone's not working to the right intensity, sometimes you'll hear them just be like, work fucking harder. Like, come on. Mm. Like, don't be the reason that we have to do more because we're not yeah. reaching the standard. Uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm just like, ha. Yeah, <laughs> we're learning. <laughs> so, what's your like? Where are you on the list, or like even the risk factor of being like deployed if um, shit kicked off somewhere? For um, physical training instructors, like not very high. Yeah, to be honest. Um, Good job. Because I feel like that would be a thing to be like, like you said before, like if mm. uh, if I'm not fit enough and that happens, and my conditioning is the difference between mm. saving that person and not saving that person. Mm. It's like, yeah. oof, I'm getting a few extra reps. Mm. Mm. And we use that in scenarios when we explain um, things to people as well. It's like, you know, when you're fighting against someone, like against someone and you're fighting with your mates, you want to know that the person next to you is mm. going to be able to keep up and do the job. Yeah. And then they're not going to fall to fucking custard when the going gets tough or not going to be able to, like, you know, carry you out of like battle or something like that. Which... Yeah. Again, I guess, like, why I got into powerlifting initially was, like, I want to be fucking strong so that I can carry my, mm. like, 80 kilo male teammate to, yeah, to yeah safety, with body whatever. armor on yeah. to, like, you know, yeah. do something like that. How, how hard is it to keep? So, I assume the likelihood of getting deployed is really low. Mm. So, you guys are essentially rocking up for a rainy day. So, is there a situation where people are, like, just... We're not going to, yeah. the likelihood of this happening is so low. Like you can chill. Yeah. How do you like, is it just constantly reminding them of why they're there? You yeah. know, to, it's yeah. like, we, we could go in five minutes. Mm. You can mm. be I out just, of here. And, like the world is always consistently changing. Like every like you can, I think you can draw parallels between life and this as well is in like, everything's always changing. Like look at like world wars or just like anything that happens like things can happen at a drop of a dime and you'll never know Mm. so it's like always about being ready and always finding that intrinsic like you joined the military for a reason what is that reason and how are you going to carry that going forward is it to deploy is it to 
you know, make the most out of like a fulfilling career, like find out what that is for you and use that as motivation. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, just getting them to decide what they want because we can't decide why they stay there. They need to find it themselves and giving them the tools to be able to find that motivation as well. And particularly when they go on off to their units, um, I'll always say like, you know, we facilitate training here for you um, because that's the way the program works. We have like a standard that we need to get you to, but do not drop that when you leave. Yeah, do not yeah. drop that when you leave. And I particularly put a lot of pressure on my old trade as well because like I was a fitness leader there for so long, like running PT, like I like my team of um, fitness leaders, like we held a very high standard for our team. So I'm like, I am not sending you guys to my old unit. Yeah, yeah, like all shit. unfit. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> you're going to go there and you're going to be at your peak and you're going to keep being at your peak. Yeah. Um, but then it's also like not putting so much expectation on them that they're like, oh my God, like if, I, if I'm not fit, Ruby's going to hate me or something like that. But it's sort of being like, you know, find your motivation when you get there, find training that you enjoy and, you know, just keep chipping away. And enjoy. So they, so they come... So they come to the ADF, they do the training, mm-hmm. then they go off to wherever they've yeah. nominated for their yeah. unit. So they, yeah. you guys have to essentially get them to a physical standard mm-hmm. that's acceptable to then be in a unit to do yeah. whatever task it is. So yeah. then do they, is it on them to just maintain that afterwards? So Pretty it's much. just like, I've just got to get in and meet this. And then after that, I could just... There's know, fitness tests along the way, right? There's still, yeah. like, we still do yeah, annual okay. fitness tests. So, yeah. like, people have to maintain a standard um, yeah. throughout the end. That's just, like, not only from, like, a health perspective, but just from making sure that they're at the minimum requirement to be able yeah, to yeah. maintain employment. What kind of, what kind of like, standard is it that they need to stay at? Um, so, our standard, like, basic fitness assessment is just push-ups, sit-ups, and a run, the 2.4-kilometer yeah. um, run. Um, and then we've also got, um, yeah, combat. Just. Um, <laughs> I could um, just run that far, I think. I could, it just wouldn't be pretty. <laughs> Need Ruby yelling I think in my ear. A, yeah. I think there's a time limit too. Yeah, there is. <laughs> oh, I'm out. I failed already. Um, and then uh, there's also like a sort of more combat orientated one, which is like a march, a bit of load carriage, um, some like, I call them spicy burpee runs. So basically it's fire, and, fire and movement, but yeah, you're just like on the ground, get up. Next line on the ground. Next up, I just yeah. call them spicy burpee runs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like suicides, but you have to lay on the ground. Yeah, 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 and yeah. it's it's under load as well. So awesome. Um, but yeah, spicy burpee run. Feel free to yeah. use that, guys. We um we put put Jace on the running treadmill the other day. Yeah, and I was like about to yell out in my head like, no, nah, your calves like need to come like your ankle needs to be higher than hey. your knee in the stride, bro. And I was like. No, let's not push this. We were. <laughs> Jace could I, end up, I, could I end up off the back of this fucking thing. <laughs> I coordinated that thing well. Like, you did. Shadow boxing. On the, <laughs> I was, fucking. was that the assault runner? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. ate fucking shit on one of them on course. I can like, see how you could. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Like, yeah. I tripped over my own feet at the, like, on the best of times and I was like, oh, I'll give this thing a go. And then like, you know, when you like watch the kids get on the treadmill for the first time and they just like yeah. don't really know what's happening. That was me. And I was like, yeah. see yeah. you later. <laughs> I think you need to know like when things are going to go bad too. Yeah. And like, and you need to know, like, I'm losing technique here. I need to, to stand on the side. The dismount. Yeah, yeah. It's, you it's, have it's to like, practice. It's the gonna. It, yeah. If it goes south, it's gone south. <laughs> yeah. We um, New Year's just gone. We're obviously getting deeper into the night. There was a couple of the boys in there. The whiskey might have bumped yeah. the egos up just a little bit. And one of my friends does like marathon runs, and like I think his like main thing is like 10k's half mm-hmm. marathon kind of deal. Very very good at it, uh, but not like super quick over 100 meters and this young kid who was like i think he's dating his sister Mm. so there's obviously a little bit of extra pump up there yeah (laughs) so we all walk out the front no shoes on new year's night 11 p.m and it's like all right street light street light let's go first run the the young kid smoked him Mm. like good five meters on him and i was like he stood up nice and tall big strides i was like okay this is all right he can actually run um and just smashed my mate they went back Obviously, drunk, not very conditioned, and we didn't give them any rest. And they were like, all right, they were going to do best out of three. All right, <laughs> go. My mate beat him off the line by like three meters. And he just, his eyes went to my mate, and then my mate laughed. So his eyes went even further, and he just got this big sway, oh. hit the deck. Oof. And I reckon the length of this coffee oh. table just like slid along the asphalt oh tattoo gone back of his ear gone yeah. brand new yeah. watch for christmas gone oh no gnarly gnarly <laughs> so if you are going to push it just 
make sure that you know how to get out of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> know when to put that handbrake yeah, on. Yeah, because it was like, it was a good fall. Like, obviously he plays footy and it was like, okay, if, if you fell like that on an oval, you would have come out of that pretty good. Yeah. But it doesn't work on Asphalt. Not going to come yeah. off uh, first best on Asphalt. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. Have you had any big, like, big injuries or anything, big stacks or anything like that, either yourself or you've seen? Um... No, not really, to be honest. Just, like, the standard ones, like, people, um, uh, when people trip over with their packs and, like, it kind of, like, just, like, kind of, like, you know, sometimes people face plant and yeah. it's like, ooh, ouch. Yeah. <laughs> packs go on over their head and all yeah, they've, like, rolled yeah. to the side. At that point, um, you're just a turtle, hey? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> just leave me here. <laughs> <laughs> nah, honestly, I haven't seen too many, like, you know, big stacks or mm. injuries or anything so like that. how big proportionately would a pack... Because Jason suggested that we should do a tactical day. But I, I think in my head he means like I shoot guns, fly guns, roll around and do cool shit. John Wick doesn't oh, carry yeah. John, day. John Wick doesn't carry a fucking but I'm 30 kilo hat. <laughs> <right>? yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, how how big would they be on... Us. Like we're not exactly tall. Mm. Um, So like it... With the top of the pack and the bottom of the pack would pretty much fit your torso. It's perfect. Yeah. Um. And then depending on if you've got like body armor on or like a, a belt rig, if the belt rig might go down like a little bit further. Um. For me, like particularly when the pack's full, it'll go like up my head and then mm-hmm. down here as well. Yeah. So, like, Is that like, <laughs> are they just the standard size? Like obviously they're yeah, not. Yeah. So we get issued like a standard sort of pack. Yeah. Does that um, mean you have to wear that if we, if you got deployed like this big, early, yeah. unfitted Mm. Yeah, you can sort of fit it to work for you okay. um like you can get different frames and all that for oh, okay. them so yeah. like um that's what i ended up doing because at the end of the day you want to take care of your body so mm. yeah 100%. find ways for things to work for you rather than against you and the mm. same as like you know making sure you got good shoes um and then like we say that to the traders all the time like you know they're coming up they've got holes in their shoes and they're like you need to get new shoes yeah, <laughs> yeah. you can't yeah. run in them <laughs> <laughs> and that it's like you're in the ADF, like your salary is fine. Get some new shoes. Yeah, <laughs> invest like, uh, and we just say like invest in your health. Like yeah. it's the yeah. same as anything else. Like y- you want longevity. Mm. If you want longevity, just spend the money on good shoes. Yeah. Spend money so on good shoes. How close to like like I've got a Catman do like mm. backpackers pack at home. How close to one of those is it? Well, nothing like that. I mean, it's camo, so probably a little bit different. Uh, it's uh, like a lot fatter, I think. Why? I'm, I'm, I'm guessing the Catman do ones are more like tubes. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. like, think of a tube, but just like... Bigger. Bigger on steroids, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. yeah. it's nice. It's all padded and has like... Yeah. If it's got a waistband, you want a waistband. It does, yeah. You want a waistband because like, particularly for me, like being a lot more like lower body dominant and like stronger down there, like having the waistband, having the weight set on my hips is a lot better because then it sort yeah. of saves your arm, shoulders and traps. And then like the longer that you go, then you can sort of start taking it a bit more up here and yeah, yeah just about finding how it works for you you and then working up slowly yeah not going from uh, 15 kilos to 40 straight away <laughs> that's a bad bad plan <laughs> it doesn't work out so well no <laughs> so how have you found hey guys hope you are enjoying this week's episode if you are please remember to like share and subscribe don't forget to head to the website where we have all our free resources gifts products services and merch for you guys to enjoy all right let's head back to the episode so you've competed twice Yes. Yeah. Did you do a lift off before that or no? No. Nah. No. Nah. So how did you find the balancing your own personal training goals? Mm-hmm. Um, like you said, like the powerlifting thing was to kind of, mm-hmm. it's a bit of a crossover mm-hmm. and we needed to juggle both. How have you found that whole process of trying to like, oh, well, this week I've got a pack march. So mm-hmm. like I've got to pull back on these or, or whatever. Like I think it's easy for us now. Yeah. But in the first sort of 12 months. Mm-hmm. First, that. Yeah, first 12 months was hard and especially, like, I'll just go and go and go, like, mm. as you know. <laughs> um, it was sort of hard to balance that because there's the expectation of, like, you know, when unit PT is running and if I wasn't running it as a fitness leader, like, you were participating. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, it was managing, like, you know, like, load and intensity and all that sort of stuff and, you know, making sure that, like, you know, we are focusing on my health at that time as well. So, um, like, you know... F- finding that um balance and at times it was hard and like you know you feel fragged particularly to, to, like towards a um sort of like a like as you're going further on in the prep and you're getting a lot more cooked like it, it was very hard to manage it sometimes and then like obviously finding my own time to train as well so 
a lot of the time I was up earlier to get my sessions in before having to run PT because there wasn't a lot of time during the day. And then by the time the day was over, it's like, I know I'm not going to be as effective in the afternoon and Mm. there's other things, especially when I started my business, like the afternoon was funneling into that. So it was finding the routine and the, yeah, pretty much finding that routine and where everything fit into that to be most effective in every single part of it. And then, um, so that was pretty much for the, the second um, prep was probably the hardest because I was also training for the PTI barrier test. Yeah. So having to pretty much, I had the luxury, um, the prep before that to cut out cardio, like for, I think it was like four or six weeks beforehand. Yeah. Um, so I could focus on that. Whereas I didn't really have that luxury um, this time around because I had to make sure that I was like, I had that um uh, conditioning in there for that and that didn't drop off mm. but I did realise when I did my barrier test after the comp that I was like I'm still pretty cooked <laughs> <laughs> funny that <though>. yeah <laughs> um, but yeah it like it I'll it was say, like within a week or something wasn't it yeah yeah, yeah it was yeah literally because yeah. I, I competed on the was it the Sunday was it the Sunday or the Monday and then it was the next Monday Monday that w- I was on course yeah. and like we had the barrier test and Everything else sort of felt all right. It was when I started the run that I was like, oh, heck. <laughs> I'm still not quite recovered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but, like, I will say, like, it was difficult to manage, but, like, you just find a way. Yeah. Like, it was what I wanted. It was my goal. Like, both of those things were my goal. I wanted to compete. I wanted to still make sure I was fit enough to, you know, pass the barrier test, no factor. Because um, I'm always, like, it's my belief that, like, you, you always need to be beyond that standard. Like, that standard is the minimum like requirement you should be able to do that standard better or like be better than that standard because like you know you don't want to rock up there day one and be worried that you're going to fail like yeah. it's mm. that doesn't help you it doesn't help anyone else like cool why put know, that stress on yourself it's cool to know you can do it on your worst day too yeah like i think that's yeah yeah and that's yeah. like that's what you like arguably what you should train for be able to pass that shit on your worst fucking day yeah um is like it, it makes it so much easier on yourself but it's also like I love the challenge of that as well like and I think that's what I fed off um juggling all of that was the challenge of it weirdly enough is like you know what can I achieve like what like where's that where's that point that's like where does it um but yeah and then noting like was going to compete this year but then sort of as soon as I sort of started this job, um, getting back into the longer um, pack marches and all that sort of stuff, the I wasn't recovering. I was cooked. And then like, you know, backing up at the end of the week with a 15, like with a 15 clicker and sometimes having to carry like a little extra weight, like if someone like dropped a pack or something and we had to help mm. carry it back, like, you know, that it, it, it contributes to that fatigue and that um, like mm. recovery demand. And then, the carryover from that into work and business and all that sort of stuff. Like I couldn't be, I couldn't do it all. And I want to believe that I can do it all, but the reality of it is that you can't do it all without burning out. Yeah. Or doing something shit. Yeah. And it's like, if I'm cooked just because of that and I can't do my job effectively, I can't show up for my team. I can't show up for um, like my job or I can't show up for Mm. business and my clients. Like what, like that doesn't help me. It doesn't help anyone. And sort of realizing that was sort of like, okay, like something needs to give a little bit here. Like I can't, like I've juggled it well up until this point, but mm-hmm. now I've got to actually have that real conversation with myself and be like, what's actually going to be achievable yeah. in, without burning myself out or, you know, pretty much being cooked and yeah. not, not being able to give the energy that I need to my job, my business, and also like to my friends and like relationships and all that yeah. as well. I think the conversation we had was mm. more around like, or as well around, yeah, like why, mm. what are you going to get out of it? Mm. What's the benefit mm. to competing? Mm. Um, and because when you asked that question, I couldn't think of why. And yeah. it was in that moment that I was like, if I, if, if I don't even know my why behind it, like what's like, why are you doing it? Yeah. Like it, then like you need to know your why, like why something's doing it. Like, and I think I just was with everything else going on. That was where I was going through the motions more so. Um, but then sort of realizing, I don't know why I'm doing this. Mm. So like, what's the purpose? Like, and once we, once, once I realign those goals, it's been happy days from there pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have like any perceived pressure to keep doing it? Like, was there, when you do sit back and look at the why and you didn't have an internal one, mm. 
was there an external one or something that you were like, you thought you had to? I think I put it on myself in like, obviously like on my page she, and all that people. She was just like, yeah, you're an asshole. And yeah, it was, it was my coach. I was like, yeah. fuck, yeah. risky question. <laughs> it, it was all bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was um, uh, like, I, I think put more pressure on myself and like the image through um, like my page and stuff. Like a lot of people knew me for powerlifting and um, like, you know, that yeah. was part of my identity on there. So I think, you know, I subconsciously at the time was putting weight on that in mm. being that like, you know, that was part of like, who I was mm. whereas it really wasn't and so I put the pressure on myself more so than anyone sort of being like yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, uh, and then my boss did actually ask me you know what like what are you striving towards like what's your goal what are you going to compete in and all that sort of stuff and then initially I felt the pressure I'm like oh heck I have to compete in something this year I'll just keep going with powerlifting and yeah. because like in our space like um, like being physical training instructors like we're always striving towards something like there's almost an expectation to be working to compete for something. Um, and I think in that as well, like that put more pressure on that is yep. like as well. Yep. So there was sort of those factors. So, but yeah, sort of realizing that you don't need to put that pressure on yourself like yeah. for the sake of an image, mm. like do what you want, You're not what you other, think you need to do. Striving for other things as well. Yeah. It's not yeah. just that physical thing that we all strive for, like being, entrepreneurs i guess you could say like mm. running your own business and yeah. all that kind of stuff like yeah we keep fit yeah it's good to be strong you know and all these physical characteristics that we have from training but yeah when you've got to put energy mm. in your business or you know give it to your clients or your mm. um your you know we'll call them recruits or mm. employees or whatever it's like you've still got to be able to go how can i divvy this up and be the best person i can um and be willing and able mm. you know to to do that yeah, and and priorities. What, where's the drop-off point yeah. that I actually can't show up? <laughs> yeah, for the other with, and which one should I actually have the things drop off from? So, yeah. are you going to drop off to your clients? Mm. Are you going to drop off to your business? Are you going to drop off to your recruits and stuff? It's like realistically, it's like they're probably not things that you could drop the yeah. ball on because mm. um, you've got to show up to them. Mm. Um, where not saying you can't show up to yourself, but you can show up to yourself in a capacity. Yeah, yeah, you know, with your own training, and it's like maybe we don't just right now go for this. Mm. you know, really huge goal yeah. that's going to affect everything else mm. right now. Yeah. And priorities mm. change as you grow. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, pro- and there's nothing wrong with that at all. <laughs> I had this um, conversation with my client, the other, yeah. um, with another client the other day of how, like, all of my clients have just hit this, like, I don't know if it's, like, a maturity thing and it's people like you that I've had three, four yeah. years that are like, yeah, I don't really care about, like, being super shredded for this or Mm. competing in that or whatever it's like one of them's doing a run you've like just want to be a boss like i'm fucking (laughs) i'm running like one of my clients she's like she's like um if you'd have told me 12 months ago that both me and ben would be running i would have fucking laughed in your face (laughs) (laughs) it's like we've just kind of been like you know what this like pressure that i'm putting on myself over here maybe (laughs) isn't it right now but i think it's important maybe to touch on too that the rewards that came with those deadlines and those like mm. that in self-imposed pressure mm. were also pretty fucking cool. Mm. And there's a mm. time for that to, yeah. to oh, put that hammer down and definitely for it. Yeah. And, and set a goal that is a little bit, you know, mm. scary and oh, 100%. to a degree, not yeah. unrealistic, but you know yeah. what I mean? It's yeah. like, yeah. if I don't fucking lay this out on the line and put myself, give myself everything, it's like that affects mm. the outcome a lot. Yeah. I think it's there's a, a lot to that. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of character building and yeah. and stuff yeah. over and De- lessons that you could carry into everything else. Deadline based goals that have an element that you can fail. Because mm. fail is so failure is where you like you learn to grow. Like people are so I believe that so many people are too scared of failure that it holds them back so mm. much oh, in course. what that they can achieve. And it's like like I get it. Like failure is scary. Like we could fail tomorrow mm. in any aspect of our life, but mm. that doesn't mean we shouldn't strive to at least give it a fucking crack because the yeah. worst case is you fail and you learn from it and you just yeah. <coughs> I've you been... change your trajectory to realign with something else. It's like the weatherman. Yeah. He fails every day. Every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they're still there the next day. Yeah. Now it's going to be cloudy with a little bit of a shower, maybe a thunderstorm. It could be sunny. It could be windy. Yeah. yeah. It's and Melbourne. The next, and the next day they just rock up with a smile yeah. ready to lay it out. It's Melbourne and things will happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like leaving work yesterday, like I left the office in my Ugg boots, realized it was absolutely hailing outside the, um, the gym. So I was like, fuck, put my shoes on. 
waited at the door for a little bit. I'm like, oh, no, I don't think this hail's going to let off anytime soon. So I like sprinted to my car, chugged everything in the car, sat in the car, hail stopped, sun came out. Yeah. I was like, you're taking the piss. Yeah. Welcome. Oh. Welcome to Melbourne. <laughs> Yeah. Bloody weather, man. Very, that's super resilient, that guy. Because he rocks up every yeah. day. I'm going to fucking deliver this yeah. to the best of my ability. I mean, it doesn't matter if I got it wrong 364 days yeah. previously, you know? I've been playing with this idea. Like, people focus really heavily on, like, not comparing yourself to others and all that kind of stuff. But I think what's actually more valuable than that is just the acceptance that even that you're giving your absolute best sometimes you'll fall short. Mm -hmm. And if you can Mm. get, not comfortable, because you want to be uncomfortable when it happens, but if you can be able to process that and overcome that, it's like, I put my absolute best on the line and I lost. Mm. And Mm. be able to take that and come back from it and overcome it, then it's like, well, fuck, you can do anything at that point. Yeah. Because it's like, I'm willing to go as hard as possible and even if it doesn't work out, I don't care. Yeah. And I think that's, that's where the, the focus for more people should be. Mm. And like knowing that you showed up and gave it your best shot, because if you've failed and you, you'll feel guilty for not, for knowing that you didn't put in your Mm. best effort and no one wants to feel that. So show up every day. Like the hardest part sometimes is getting up and showing up. But Mm. as soon as you show up, you're onto that next step. And then once you've conquered that next step, it's just about making it to the next step. And it's all those little goalposts. Like for some people, sometimes making it to the next hour in the day is really, really hard. But if you can make it to that next hour and make the most of it, then everything sort of flows on from there and you just keep chipping away at that. Mm. And then like, you know, being comfortable, like we say all the time, get comfortable with being uncomfortable Mm. because it's in the discomfort that we grow and we learn. And then we're able to push for more things. Like we can... It's the same with training. It's the same with life. It's the same with like business and all that sort of stuff. Like, and set goals that scare the shit out of you. Mm. Like, cause you're going to work for them. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned earlier, obviously, um, initially we were looking at like health markers for you. Yeah. Do you want to unpack that a little bit? And just like, cause obviously outside in, yeah. it's like, there's so much fucking stimulus in your life <laughs> <laughs> and how you're able to, yeah, I guess return those mm. health markers to normal. Mm. Well, like it definitely started and before I started with you, like I was overtraining, under fueling and I wasn't as educated back then about what was actually happening. So I lost my cycle for, I think it was two or three years. Mm. Yeah, Um, Yeah. So, and I just was sort of like, I knew it was a problem, but I refused to acknowledge it. Yeah. Like I was like, I don't want to deal with that right now because I'm shredded. Like I'm fit. I'm keeping up with the boys. Like, you know, that sort of side of things was what I was focusing on rather than the effects of my health. Yeah. Mm. And then sort of having a bit of a scare. Like I, I was listening to, I can't remember what podcast it was, but they were giving them like the, the reality of like, you know, when a, like a female loses their cycle, like this is the flow on effects and this is what can happen. And I was like, Oh fuck. Yeah. Like yeah. something is going to change here. Um, and then like, you know, starting on like with yourself and then being, being honest with the fact that like, yeah, look, this is what's, happening and all that sort of stuff and then it did take two years to um get it back because and even now still working through like the mindset and I'm a lot better but you know knowing when I'm starting to get into that overtraining sort of side of things like as I said like I can I can go 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 Mm. but like you know it's the other compounding factors of life and stress and business Mm. that all have an effect on that side of things um and like, you know, sleep, like we all know that those lifestyle factors have a contributing Mm. factor to it. And it was about, I always wanted to do more, like always more, 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 more. Um, And then sort of being accountable to you and you calling me out on my bullshit and being like, you need to fucking slow down, mate. (laughs) (laughs) Um, That's how you said it too, right? (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, just like, you know, always sometimes taking two steps forward and one step back, but always going in that little bit further forward in reducing, knowing that less is more like, Mm. and I distinctly remember at one stage, I think it was either the first or the second prep where, um, started cutting out unit PT a lot more because I was running it and like performance, everything just went through the roof because there wasn't that fatigue of just that junk. Yeah. that I was doing yeah. yeah, and then um, yeah realizing that but then the compounding factor of just focusing on all those markers like I went and got acupuncture um, 
like reduced like even my steps and like my neat where I could just to reserve that and even though it was hard like I like literally and even still now sort of have to battle with it in my head to be like okay is doing that actually going to help you or hinder you yeah. like are you doing mm. that just because you feel like you have to and because you want to or do, do you need that mm. um ruby's check-in last week was do not train <laughs> she was sick i was yeah. like no 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 do not train yeah for the whole week <laughs> yeah yeah did you? did you not train no i yeah. um I'd... well i trained uh the the monday because i felt kind of fine and it was the yeah, next day yeah. that i was like oh fuck I've got the sniffles. Yeah. Um, and then knowing the, um, so we do, like, as I was talking about, like the um, basic fitness assessment that we have, we, um, as a, as a team, we have like our own version of that. Um, so I knew that was coming up on Thursday and like, you, I couldn't really back out of that. So it's like, that's going to be very taxing. That's going to be full send. So like, you know, reserving myself for that. And mm-hmm. then sort of the days afterwards, not training as yeah, well cool. to recover from that. But old me, would have still trained. Yeah, no, I think w- that's... Would have, like, just pushed through it, been like, you know, if you want it bad enough, you'll train when you're sick and mm. all that sort of stuff. When actually knowing that, like, you know, rather than in backing off now, you're going to be so much better off than just flogging yourself to death and hoping that, yeah. like, you sweat it out. If you want it bad enough, you'll make sure you can train next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's shifting... It's the flip, yeah. Yeah, it's um, flipping that mindset and, like... It hasn't happened overnight, like, as you know, like, it's taken a lot for, and as I said, like, I still battle with it now, is knowing when to actually, like, when, like, what you're doing is not good. Like, you know, don't just go for another walk for the sake of going for a walk, because you don't need it. Like, spend that time to rest. Um, And then also now having, like, starting my business was another thing, like, that was really good in that perspective as well, because it's allow me to have that time and that energy into something yeah. else. And yeah. Yeah. Less physical demand. Yeah. But yeah. I've definitely um, learned a lot and in learning all that and pulling back in that, like I've got my cycle back and it's a lot mm. more consistent now. Whereas um, now I know like a marker is like, if stress is really high it and it doesn't come that month, then it's like, okay. Yeah. Have a look at things. Yeah. And Get that's things back. pretty much what happened um, at this month just gone was like the stress of work and um, like business and just like everything else that was sort of um, going on in that space it was like, okay, this hasn't come. Mm. Looking back on it, it's like, okay, like I can deal with stress very, very well. Um, mm. Probably too well <laughs> in some regards. So like yeah. looking back on the markets and being like, okay, you are, you are stressed. Yeah. This can, is why it hasn't you can deal happened. You from stress mentally. Well. Yeah. Can yeah. absorb stress well. Yeah. yeah. Can absorb stress well. Because <laughs> it's Wait. physical and then yeah. there's mental. Yeah. 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 Whereas this month, like I've taken probably the biggest step back from a lot of things than I have in a long time and mm. it's paid off. Like, yeah. It's, and, and all of a sudden it's like PBs on your fitness testing and all that yeah. kind of stuff, which is, yeah. Yeah. I it's, think that's um another, that that's another advantage of having a, like, you know, outsourcing that decision making. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, cause you know, people think there's a lot of people out there that are like, you know, oh, I only need to get a coach or I only need to do PT or something mm. like that if I'm struggling. Mm. Yeah. So it's like, I need to just make sure that they motivate me to turn up or, um, that I have this plan and to be accountable to somebody so that I actually do it. But it's mm. like, you're on the other end of the spectrum. Like yeah. you'll do it. You actually do too much, mm. you know? And it's like, there's probably people out there now that are like, they're doing five, six sessions a week, you know? And they're just like, why am I not making progress? Why do I feel mm. fucked all the time? you know, why do I stick to my diet and it's still, or why do I eat well, like, you know, um, mm. with air quotes and it's not get the outcomes that they want. And it's like having someone to sit there and just go, all right, I'm going to make all the decisions for you without mm. the emotion. Yeah. And it's mm. like, here, here's where you're overshooting. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think the coolest part, like at least from my experience of that whole process was like, we talk about having a um, proactive method with reactive options. Yeah. Mm. So, and that's literally... You're every single yeah. week with you is reactive. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, this is the check-in. Cool. Drop off the accessory work yeah. or send it this week or mm. like don't train, like whatever yeah. needs to happen. I think we, we talk about a lot, like making progress on your worst weeks. Yeah. What's so if it's like, maybe you can't train this week, what's the minimum effective thing we can do to get you an outcome. Or if you're on the other end of the spectrum, like mm. yourself, it's like you want to train 10 times this week. It's like, okay, where do we kind of pull things yeah. back to and keep you... Because you can't just be like... You can't walk into someone like mm. you in that consult and be like, no, you train too much. Yeah. You can only do this. Yeah. You're like, fuck off. Like, I'll just yeah, go yeah. find yeah. someone else that'll lean into what yeah, I Yeah, you have yeah. to find that balance of like, what's going to tick the box for you psychologically at the end of the week so you feel like you've won. Mm. 
mm. and also what's going to progress you over a month, a quarter, a year. So then you look at those metrics and feel like you've won. Yeah. And I think like obviously you coach primarily people who are trying to get in or mm. are already into yeah. the ADF. It's like being able to balance those factors same for you like with body composition Mm. powerlifting preps all of that it's like okay what can we do this week even if it's a shit week to still find a way to win yeah 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 or make a contribution in a positive fashion yeah yeah you know yeah rather than chasing always chasing progression at the expense of something yeah Mm. it's like well no 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 let's make a contribution positively but sometimes that's Peeling things out, like, yeah. you know, don't train this week or like, yeah. you know, maybe let's do 50% of your training volume or, yeah. you know, something like that. And sometimes people just need another another focus aspect. As well. Some, they get too hung up on, say, like, you know, they've got four sessions, but something's come up or they're not like, you know, feeling. And then they feel so dreadful about not getting that fourth session. It's like, you're looking at what you didn't achieve. Look at what you did. Yeah. Like, you still mm. got three sessions and you still hit this mark. You still hit this marker and you had... Like, you know, like maybe something really good happened in their life. It's like you've got those things to focus on as well. And at the end of the day, how are you feeling? Are you going to let that one thing affect how you've like gone this whole week? And then looking at like, okay, what can we do next week as well? Like, you know, always like that positive drive forward rather than focusing on like the negative or like what didn't happen. Showing up more often. Showing up over a longer period of time rather than acutely. I think like if we all... Just focus on that. It's like, how can yeah. I show up 52 weeks of the year? Yeah. yeah. And it's like... And have it be sustainable. You know, don't really look at, oh, I missed this workout mm. on week 32. It's just like, I showed up yeah. for 52 weeks and yeah. or 48 if you have a couple of weeks off or whatever. Yeah. Mm. And it's like, just getting more hung up on that. But and it's you, like, you can kind of go both ways though. That's the hard thing. Yeah. It's yeah. like... You said earlier about coaching. Yeah. And I think that's like, or well, that's what coaching is. Like, this is part of it. It's that collab, mm. collaborative kind of back and forth with coach and client mm. to identify when no 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 you should have done the four yeah and when you say no 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 that's cool like it's all fine like yeah. let's regroup and move on to next week yeah and it's usually in a dosage thing yeah. it's and usually like that- actually you've only done three for three weeks the fuck's yeah. going on yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> once and- off is okay yeah. but hey yeah. yeah and having that honesty piece as well is being like brutally honest like you know not mm hiding like anything that's happened that week like just being honest because the more that you know the more that you can help and then yeah. like and it goes back like the check-ins and accountability thing as well it's like you know what's actually happened this week reflecting on my week what's happened and so sometimes i might not even notice i've done something that might be out of alignment it's like well actually this happened <laughs> yeah um and then like you know being honest like if i got on the piss on the weekend or something like that and being like yeah had some drinks and like you know this is sort of stuff but this is the action point moving forward and yeah like having that honesty piece is like really good because it goes back to that like you know coach and client communication and being able to move forward from there as well have yeah. a like you know an action focus and yeah it's the difference between coaching and programming yeah mm. it's like just giving someone a program and just be like follow that mm. and then that like you don't want it bad enough kind of thing it's like that's not coaching yeah yeah, yeah. so i guess for yourself like most of your business is centered around people trying to get into mm-hmm. and pass that test yeah. initially um What's that like? Like, what are the biggest, I guess, mistakes or obstacles that the people face walking into that? Merely just trying to meet the standard Mm. because it's, and this is like the personal opinion of myself. Um, I just want to disclose that is (laughs) that the pre-entry enlistment standards are bullshit. They are not setting people up for success Mm. um, going into basic training and beyond that. They do have a metric of being like you are at the minimum standard to be able to conduct the training. It doesn't mean it's going to help you. Mm -hmm. Um, So the biggest um, hurdle to overcome there is making sure people are going beyond that because the fitter you are, like the more like condition you have, the stronger that you are is going to benefit you so much more down the track. It's going to reduce the risk of injury, which is, and especially going through your training, like you don't, like injuries do set you back because you can't always continue with the training depending on the injury. So if we can mitigate that from the start by making sure that we've built you up to yeah. a really good standard is just going to help so much more. Yeah. Um, and then there's not a lot of education around going into certain roles. Like even now, I feel that there's still not enough information 
given to people about particularly going into combat corps and all that sort of stuff as well because the demand is quite a lot higher. Yeah. Um, and, you know, people will come in just sort of – and I have this conversation with so many people – like um over social media and all that it's like we did not know what we were in for we were yeah. not told this we were not told that this was going to be the requirement um so for me it's getting them we aim not for the pre-enlistment standards like i uh, we aim for the bfa standards um and beyond yeah so that um when they're in they feel confident it's that almost that's like gonna... here's a week this yeah. is what your week will look like can yeah. you do that yeah rather than like because what's it's like 30 push-ups or some shit right for the guys uh, for the BFA, it's forty. Yeah. Forty for dudes. What's the pre list one? Fifteen. Yeah. So you can think oh, about wow. you think about the jump, and then um like I'm gonna that's talk a lot. It's yeah. not even double. It's more. That's it's like you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, a lot. Yeah, and it's reducing again as well. Like there's um, I think from memory the females for non combat cores for push ups is like five or something like that, yeah. and then they have to get twenty one for. So non combat cores means. Like units that don't require like physicality, like oh, to a every, degree. Like, there's still or? like a degree of physicality yeah. in like the work in general, but your sort of combat cause you think like your infantry and yeah. all that sort of stuff. They're like so they're higher sort of obviously line. from that. Yeah, physical element though. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they have to be at a um, higher standard, and just to be able to with like because the training that even we put um, our tra- trainees through is very high intensity. Mm. Like we have we like periodize it and modulize it to like you know fatigue, like all that good stuff, but compared to what a lot of them have been exposed to before, it's totally different. Like some of them get quite a bit of culture shock. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, So, um, but yeah, that's the biggest hurdle for people coming in. And like, you know, people, even now, like I I don't know if some people just don't want to hear it, that they're not quite at the standard yet, but, and not that I want to put the fear in them of like, you know, you're not where you need to be. Mm, Yeah. It's it's being realistic because... I'm not going to bullshit you. I want there to be full transparency that like yeah. if you're only just meeting the mark and you're struggling, then you're going to struggle yeah, for yeah. a good part of it as you still build yeah. yourself up. They and why do you want to start on the back foot? I'd need, I'd want to know that I'm falling short though. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think it, I think the, it's how you deliver it. Mm. That's yeah. the most important thing. Obviously that would be a recruitment thing, right? Like if we lower it a bit, we get more recruits through mm. and give us a chance to develop them at least. Mm. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that's it's a hard balance, I guess, from a from a like a higher up point of yeah, view, yeah, administrative point of view, yeah, like looking at it, bigger yeah, picture. it's a very big complex. Where, what's topic, the point where? <laughs> what's the point where that pre-entry qualification is to, is, means so many people drop out when they get there that we end up with less? Mm. Yeah. Versus, like, if, if we can get twenty percent more and only five percent of those drop out, we still have a net game of fifteen percent. I guess it's like, mm. yeah. yeah. Mm. And I just I feel like just like mental like like mentally wise as well if people are going in feeling like they're unprepared like it it leads to whether they sort of acknowledge or not a bit of like performance anxiety and stuff so it sets them back mm-hmm. and then they're like they're scared to go to PT and yeah. I don't want people to be scared to come to PT like it's supposed to be like an environment where you know you're like you're bettering yourself you're getting in a good session like you're mm-hmm. getting fitter you're getting stronger like there's that environment rather than like obviously there's a discipline environment and that from it as well but you you, do I put that stress on yourself yeah. and make mm-hmm. it harder than it sort of like needs to be like, like even mentally for yourself. Like you don't want to be fearful of being mm-hmm. in that place because you're not, because you're just at that baseline. Yeah. yeah. But I think it, if you can show that you can show the palm, like the journey, mm-hmm. like if you can show them like, you know, you're here, but if we do this, this and that, we'll mm-hmm. get there. I think like that to a degree can kind of alleviate mm-hmm. that anxiety. Like, yeah. yeah, it's like that growth mindset. It's like, mm-hmm. Just showing up and being shit isn't, and just continuing to do it is not a growth mindset. It's like, yeah. okay, so if I show up and I do this, this stuff, like I've got this plan that's leading to growth, it's like that's what's going to make me, you know, change the way I think and yeah. change yeah. the way I act, and mm. and and the outcomes are obviously going to be a reflection of that. Mm. So, I think again, it's like the delivery is everything. Mm. Like it's like as as you and that your, I guess like um, you know, your peers. It's like how you guys deliver that and how we deliver it all as mm. coaches as well is super important. Yeah. Rather than saying, yeah. oh, you're not where you need to be and you just need to do this. It's like if you have this uh, all set out for you in this manner and you show up, do your PT, maybe do a bit extra training on the side. Mm. Like I don't know how you guys do that. It's like maybe that starts to alleviate that pressure for that yeah. person. Yeah. yeah, 100%. Yeah, and how often do you have that even with clients? Like you said, like people come in and it's like, I want this outcome. 
and it's like uh, like dieting for example like yeah, everyone yeah. wants to jump into everyone wants to be shred shredded. straight away yeah. it's yeah, like yeah. Um, do you know what you ate last week uh, no have you trained consistently for like the last month uh, no it's like okay how about we put the foundations in place yeah. yeah and then when you do and that's I think that's like you said part of that is showing yeah when we've done this and we've ticked the boxes for four weeks yeah then we can move into this phase and then this phase and this phase and it's I think allowing people like what we were saying earlier like allowing people to have a win yeah weekly monthly whatever that's what builds like you said they have that anxiety coming into it that takes the anxiety away and replaces it with confidence yeah Mm. super interesting Mm. all right that was a great chat yeah thanks for coming you had to drive all the way out in the yeah shitty rain looks like it's cleared up yeah that's so it'd be sunny yeah Mm. windy maybe (laughs) yeah see what the the weatherman yeah (laughs) see what the weatherman said you know yeah yeah so uh, go and do some shopping. Yeah, depending on yeah. if Ruby actually had a good time and her boss, Ruby might be a, a regular cycling through. Mm-hmm. Um, but before that, where do we find you? Instagrams, websites. Do you have spots open for coaching at the moment? Um, don't have spots open for coaching at the moment. Because um, she did, because she did stand out PT. She's yeah. too busy. Must have good <laughs> wrong good podcast, mentoring, but good, good business mentoring. <laughs> No, um, um, like one-on-one coaching spots, but I do have um, programs available, especially for um, applicants and all that wanting to enlist. Um, there is a, um, through those programs, you still have contact with me. Like I'll still help you through. There's just not the um, one-on-one coaching there. Um, on Instagram, it's rf underscore rfpc. Um, website still in uh, the makings again. Um, that's a very long story short. <laughs> There's a very long story as to how my business kind of just got, wa- uh, my business, my um, website got wiped off the face of the earth. It kind of like came up and blindsided me and I was like, what the heck happened? But that'll come. Um, it's in the works again, just making sure that what happened isn't going to happen again. Yeah, well. Yeah, so learning experience okay. is that one. <laughs> but yeah, that's yeah. Um, where to find me. Very um, active on Instagram and all that sort of and stuff. And for anyone that, Maybe is their interest has been peaked in going to the ADF? Like, where do you, where would you be able to, like, where would they need go to get the most information on, like, you know, getting in? Uh, definitely, um, like defense jobs, defense yeah. jobs. Um, I think it's defensejobs dot com. They have um like a description on pretty much every job that's available. Um, and then you can just apply through there. Um, there's a lot of um information sessions and forums that they do through that as well. Um, through Defence Force Recruiting, if they follow yeah. them on um like Facebook and Instagram, they always announce when they're having um information nights and all that sort of stuff, so people can get um a lot of information. And then also, I'm happy for people to message me because the good thing about being like in the military is like it's. It may seem quite big, but it's also quite small in a way. Yeah. Like you've got, like in your career, you network with everyone. So you know of someone who's in a job. So you can always yeah. sort of like ask for a bit of information. But yeah, first point of call, I'd say defense jobs and make and just have a look at the descriptions to see what sort of jobs that you are, like that align with you, that you feel drawn to. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. Awesome. Um, mm. So for us at STC Fit and stcfit.com. That's Sweet. it. Thanks, guys. Right, thanks, guys. See you next time. Yeah. Bye. Thanks for tuning into the episode. Don't forget to like it if you liked it and subscribe if you loved it and share it with somebody who you think needs to hear it. Don't forget also to head to the website for all our free resources, products, services, and merch. All right, see you next time.